Peace be with you. Welcome back to my channel, Healing Life with Positivity 24-7, 365, 365, 24-7. If this is your first time coming to this platform, then welcome. Come on in, have a seat, stand up, whatever you feel you need to do to get these beautiful intuitive spiritual nudges by way of healing, right? Positively, with positivity, obsessively, compulsively, and or deliberately. Do this for yourself. It will be the best thing that you will have committed to in all of your life. I promise you that. And I don't make a lot of promises, but come on in here. Bring your inner child. Now, if you're returning back to the channel, thank you so much for your donations. Thank you for your beautiful contributions to the channel. Beautiful comments as we heal positively 24-7, 365 days. So I've already pulled some cards, y'all. Um, I was up early this morning praying, meditating. Something about starting the day with meditation and prayer covers the day and or sets the tone for how your day is going to go, right? So I remember, you know, um, getting an intuitive download. Somebody said to me the other day, oh, how's your day treating you? And immediately my mind said, wait a minute, how am I treating my day? How I treat my day is how my day is going to respond, right? So this is the day that the Most High has made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it. Let me tell you something. If you only commit to that, that alone is enough, okay? It absolutely will set the tone, set the high vibration for how your day is going to treat you based on how you're seeing your day, right? It's equal give and take by way of the day. And to see another day is a gift, okay? But I also heard in meditation, the only person you needed to give permission to was yourself to move forward. Give yourself permission to heal and move forward, okay? Oftentimes, unfortunately, you know, uh, we've been in moments where sometimes we get stuck in a memory or a pain or, you know, somebody did something to us and for some reason the mind just wants to wrap itself around you know, that thought and the thought wants to wrap itself around your mind. So spirit is saying gratitude is always going to be your best asset Two, give yourself permission to move on. And three, give yourself permission to forgive yourself for taking so long to not move on. Because what happens is once we really download the fact that we're the only person really holding ourselves back, that what somebody did to us has nothing to do with us, but only a reflection of who they are. It's almost like uh, it's bittersweet because you're like, why did I take so long <laughs> to, to forgive myself or give myself permission to move forward, right? So you start to have a real conversation with yourself, right? Again, it's bittersweet. You could go through a whole slew of emotions. Maybe you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Or, you know, uh, you know, I need to give myself permission to heal and move on because what it does is it takes you back to self. And it takes you back to value of self. It takes you back to self-love. And so sometimes if you feel as though you've taken too long to either move forward, you could examine yourself by way of uh, feeling regretful for not being patient with yourself, for not wrapping your beautiful spirit around yourself or for thinking that you're worthy to move forward and move on, right? Okay, so it's a very powerful um, experience. It's layered in my opinion. Okay. And I'm only speaking from what it is that I've had to go through, but once you give yourself that permission to move forward, you absolutely go through a spiritual aha moment. You know, it's like, Oh, all I have to do is give myself permission to move forward. Yeah. And if that becomes, you know, difficult, God forbid, then just be patient with yourself. So every moment you're saying, you know what? I'm being patient with myself. But in that, I give myself permission to move forward, to go forth. I feel deserving of, you know, uh, the ability to move forward. I feel deserving of the experience of what it feels like to move forward and or forgive myself, starting with myself. So listen, I pulled these cards previously, again, after meditating as guided by spirit. So the first one is chew your food with intention, okay? Oftentimes, you know, anxiety, depression, you know, uh, emotional eating can cause people to eat food in haste, 
you're either eating to survive or to enjoy. I like to do a combination of the two because I really love good quality food. I can't just eat anything, right? And so something about really engulfing all of your senses as you take in a meal, taking a deep breath, allowing your taste buds and your smell and your sight to all be engaged in the moment, giving yourself that moment, right? I've seen people eat food in haste. I've been somebody that's eaten food in a rush or haste. Sometimes it's triggered, right? From a childhood wound, you know? Maybe you had a parent that was like, you better clear your plate. You're going to eat all that food. It created some form of anxiety. It's the little things, right? That sometimes we overlook. And so then the body gets stressed and it holds on to unnecessary water and weight. And that is what creates dis-ease in the body by way of feeling uneasy, feeling guilty for enjoying your food, feeling guilty for, you know, enjoying a meal and or taking your time. Take your time with your food. Write down what you take in because what you put in your body is going to say a lot about what you think about yourself. Something about writing it down, okay? What you eat in a day. So this affirmation is from the beautiful Namaste Stress Less Cards. It says, eat with intention. Savor the food in your mouth and chew it well. Take your time, okay? Psychology says if you take 20 minutes to eat, the body naturally has a fast metabolism and you will be satisfied no matter if you've eaten less or a full plate of food. Something about the neurons in your brain processing the fact that, hey, we're eating, we're satisfied. So you don't overeat and overindulge emotionally, right? Because sometimes food can be an emotional drug. It absolutely does release some endorphins. You ever watch when people are really into food? Mm, oh, they, you know, they're having like these, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, food gasms, if you will, right? Okay, so we have to be mindful of that by way of catering to the physical body, putting in your body those things that you know are going to sustain your physical body, not just physically, but mentally. Food is energy, okay? So this says, chew your food well. This not only aids in the digestion, but it helps to ground us in the present. Focus on the texture of the food. Make sure you're aware of your mouth. Is it sweet? Is it savory? Right? Pretend you are a food critic. Enjoy the process of eating and break down the experience as much as possible. You know what this reminds me of? Thank you, Most High, for these triggering moments because triggering moments give you an opportunity to reevaluate yourself, right? To master yourself, to know yourself. This reminds me, y'all, of a time that my step-up father made me eat quiche. Oh, my God. It was horrible. My step-up father, let me tell you, he had good intentions, but there were some things that later in life I became very stubborn about. Like when somebody would want to make me eat something, it would trigger me and take me back to my childhood. He was the kind of person that you know, uh, on a positive note, he'd be like, well, try it. How do you know you don't like it unless you try it? I was like, I could have a, a, a straight, you know, one choice type of a, uh, a food. Like I only ate chocolate ice cream until he made me try other flavors, right? Notice what I said, made, forced, right? Forced. It's one thing to have free will, and to be able to decide for yourself and to be able to say, you know, I want to try some new ice cream. But let me tell you something. One time he made me eat some quiche. Oh, my God. It traumatized me. I don't ever intend to eat no quiche for the rest of my life in this lifetime or the next. I don't understand it. I don't understand the milk, the cheese, the clumping, the whatever that was. Oh, and my mother had made it. And so he didn't want want me to hurt her feelings, but he forced me to eat it. Ugh, bleh. To this day, honey, I can now laugh about it 
I'm glad that he made me try it. Let me just put a positive spin on it because I will never try it again. Okay, tried it, did not like it. I don't understand quiche at all in any sense of the word. But that reminds me of him forcing me. So later in life, it created some anxiety around eating, you know, um, forcing a child to clear their plate, forcing them to eat something they don't like right? Uh, you know, could be traumatizing. It is traumatizing. So let us break the curse of that, right? Don't pass that down. Some of you have your experiences. Please comment down below. I'd love to hear because the more we discuss, the more we purge it out, baby, this is how we heal life with positivity 24-7, 365. Listen, sometimes it might get a little ugly before it gets pretty. Sometimes it might go through a little hell before it gets to heaven, but it's absolutely going somewhere by way of healing, by way of forward moving, by way of moving along very beautifully, by way of healing those traumas. Listen, food is huge when it comes to adolescence. And it's interesting because the same step up father told me about why he didn't like oatmeal because his, he said, and grits, he said his babysitter would make it for him every day. He said he vowed when he was like five years old, when I grow up, I ain't never eat no oatmeal and no grits. And listen, here he was passing along that same generational curse unconsciously though, forcing me to eat things, right? The same way somebody did him. So when my children say they don't like something or they try something, I'm just like, hey, that's what it is. I don't force them. They want to try something and they don't like it. At least you tried it. But for me, it's like a conscious reminder. Do not force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. This is about free will. This is about setting yourself free too. And it seems like it's um, something that we would not give attention to by way of a meal. But a meal absolutely has a lot to do with your mental health, what you eat, what you drink right? Are you eating garbage? Are you eating low vibrational food? You know, do you know how the cow died? Maybe the chicken was traumatized. Who knows? Sometimes you take on that energy. Okay. I remember watching a video about a chicken coop and they were mistreating these chickens. Oh my God. I didn't eat chicken y'all for like three years. I could not get the imagery out of my head about how they were like beating the chickens and the chickens were like in this nasty like environment and there were flies and you know all this weird nasty stuff and they were just stepping on birds and not caring if they killed one and I was like oh no so listen the animal the trauma yeah and then you take that into your body they're pumping it with all these hormones and water and then you wonder why your nine-year-old daughter is getting her cycle and she's eight and a half about to turn nine type of energy. Okay, come on. It's the energy, you understand, of food. So eat living food in order to feel alive. Since I've changed my diet, y'all, I'm going to be honest, I feel absolutely supernatural. I look younger now than I did when I was in my 20s. I looked at myself the other day. I was like, whoa. My eyes look brighter. Not only that, the energy, right? The agreement that I'm making with myself, the contract, the new contract to give myself permission to be healthy and only eat well and to move forward, that in itself is a vibration. That in itself. So then self says, hey, give me more of that. <laughs> give me more of that high vibration, whatever that is. Let me eat more of that spiritually, mentally, physically. Oh, okay, listen. It says intentionally chewing your food while eating will allow you to be more present. Being in the moment, any moment can reduce stress significantly. Just by doing this, you may be able to notice what kinds of food your body needs and is craving. So I'm a firm believer that if you really are in true spiritual alignment and you're craving something, give it to your body. Okay, just make sure it's the best quality. That's like me. I absolutely do crave sweets at certain times. Not a lot. It's a very rare craving now that I've changed my diet. But when I eat, I don't eat crappy diets. I mean, crappy diets. I don't eat crappy diets either. I meant to say desserts, y'all. <laughs> I don't eat crappy desserts, right? By way of my diet. Thank you, Spirit, for kindly correcting me in, in spirit and in truth. Listen. I don't eat no crap by way of desserts. Mm -mm. 
I used to get friends to be like, oh, you bougie. I, I guess call it what you want. Call it whatever you want. This is my body. Okay. Again, going back to childhood, it's my body. Right. Nobody can make me eat what I don't want to eat. And I'm really happy about that, that I can consciously decide for myself as an adult what it is that I eat. I don't go to fast food restaurants. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't do none of that. No. If I order food, it's going to cost. You know why? Because the universe already knows that I have a certain allowance. I need a certain amount of money to eat per day to eat well. I can taste when something is made with chemicals. Like the other day, y'all, I tried some French fries. Why did I go against myself? Why? Why? I had to have a conversation with myself like, why did you do that? Don't do that no more. What are you trying to prove? What were we feeling in the moment that you feel that you had to try this French fry? These French fries were fried in some type of chemical. I put one fry in my mouth and I was like, Ooh. I said, my body can't eat that. I said, whatever they're frying this in, there's chemicals on it. I can taste it. A lot of my stuff I make in, you know, if I fry something, it's in coconut oil. Okay. Sunflower oil, peanut oil. I don't really do too much peanut oil. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes. Eh, but I like coconut oil unrefined in its natural state. Right. And olive oil. I'll do olive oil. Okay. But yeah, I could taste the chemical. I was like, what is this? Oh, hell to the no. And then you walk up to McDonald's. And there's a sign in the window that says, warning, eat at your own damn risk. Let's just translate that. Eat at your own risk. Some of this shit we cook it, this stuff in might cause cancer. Hey, what you want, a number nine or a number eight? It's like, hell no. Because they're using things because they're making food fast. I don't want food that's made fast. I need something slow cooked. I need some, if I'm going to eat a biscuit, somebody better be back there making that biscuit. I want to see some hands. I want to see the real. If I'm going to eat dairy, which I try to stay away from, it needs to be real butter. I don't play with no margarine. Margarine is primarily plastic, okay? All right. I just needed to go on the tangent because food is my thing, y'all. But nevertheless, moving right along, Spirit says, the body, the body, the body, the body, walk, walk, walk. Some days, life feels heavier than others. When this happens, stop where you are. When you can and take a walk, motion creates emotion. New emotions helps you get your mind off of old moods. And it also helps you from releasing things that are trying to weigh you down energetically. When you walk, you give your mind a well-deserved vacation. After a walk, you will be able to work more effectively and have a clear understanding of your situation. Yeah, walk, walk, walk. So food, walking, what I put in my body, now I am giving my body permission to be mobile, right? Thank the most high for motion. Look at how smart the body is. The fact that the hands, if they're feeling tired, I can just move my fingers I can rotate my fingers. I can rotate my shoulders. I can move my legs. I can put my body in a full motion. That alone yields a beautiful energy. Just me doing this here at my desk makes me feel a certain way. Share your experience. Come on, give us some tips. What do you do? What do you do when you need to move that physical body? Right? Move that physical body. And everything in balance. That's just like with food, you know? If you overeat, you're going to be overweight. If you if you don't eat enough, you're going to be, you know, malnourished and balance. There's days where I pull back where I don't want anything and I just fast. And I'm not the skinniest person on the planet, but I'm absolutely extremely healthy. I thank the most high for it. I just got my blood work done. Everything is perfect. My doctor said, listen, <laughs> if all my patients were healthy like you, I'd be out of business. I said, exactly. What's your secret? I said, well, you know, try to keep a decent mindset, right? Yeah, it's a real deal, holy field type of a situation. It really is a vibe. It really is a vibe all the time. Listen, sit under a tree. You can physically do this or imagine it. I like to physically do it, but something about the imagining faculty when you need to sit up under a tree and you can imagine that down to the very detail, what the tree feels like, 
what it smells like, taking every single like, you know, energy of the tree. Because when you need to go into your mental vortex, Rolodex, by way of your mind's memory, you can absolutely draw in all senses of the tree. Do y'all know that right now I can smell what a tree smells like? Trees are very vital. They give oxygen, right? This is how powerful the mind is that whatever it imagines down to the very detail, it absolutely does make so. So imagine more nature because that is what you are, Spirit is saying. It says you can physically do this or imagine it. Either way, you must notice the tree. What kind is it? What color are the leaves? What season is it in? What noise do you hear? What sense do you capture? Sit under the tree for eight minutes and let your senses, ooh, look at us sitting under the tree. Let your senses run wild. Nature is one of the greatest healers. Whether you are physically there or imagine a beautiful natural scene in your mind, you will begin to relax. Nature is a natural stress reliever and an organic way to cultivate a feeling of peace. I don't know about y'all, but I need more of that. I need more of that frequency, right? Oh yeah, let's call in more of that frequency. I like it. I like that. Today I'm going to eat me something really, really good, y'all. Something real good. Yeah, quality. The other day I made a really good banana, celery, and what else did I put in there? Spinach. Okay, for my iron level. The spinach is amazing. I also take sea moss, y'all. I take my calcium. Please know women, especially women after the age of 25, your body stops producing calcium. I do not drink milk. I have not had regular milk probably since I was ooh, 17, 18 when I went into the nation of Islam and changed my diet. Okay, and I learned about milk. So I drink coconut milk. So I don't get my calcium from that, but you can absolutely get calcium from other things. Collard greens, uh, mustard greens. Um, you know, so I drink almond milk, coconut milk. And now the oat milk, I love the oat milk. I love oat milk. It's so sweet and good. Um, I did have some non-dairy ice cream the other day that was really good. And it was made with cashew milk. I bought three different kinds. One was made with coconut milk. One was made with cashew milk. And then I bought one that said it was dairy free and it had eggs in it. I'm like, what? I was so pissed off. So I'm writing them a letter to say, hey, you need to stop marketing this saying it's dairy free when you're using eggs. It says on the back has eggs and the soybean. Watch out for that soybean, y'all. That soybean. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't, don't. Just do your research. Nevertheless, okay, we'll do that on another platform at another time. Maybe I'll start another platform too, talking about herbs and what I know by way of healing. Because a lot of what I've learned um, has helped with people healing from, you know, black magic, witchcraft, people that alter the food, put things in the food that are toxic. You know, they want to attach things to you. So I know how to break a lot of those curses by way of the physical body. Um, it's going to take a little bit more research, though, for me to introduce that to you all. But I probably will create another platform for that in the near future. Nevertheless, this says barefoot walk, walk barefoot. Do you remember what it feels like to have the fresh grass between your toes? Yes, I do. I did it the other day. I'm going to do it again today, y'all. <laughs> when was the last time you allowed your bare feet to touch the earth and feel everything underneath them? Give yourself a moment to walk barefoot. Invite all the sensations into your body. Walk slowly and calmly. Slow, calm movement that invites vulnerability like walking barefoot can help ground you in the moment. Feel your body relax into this exercise. Do this as much as possible, y'all. And then finally, from the Namaste, stress less cards, it says, acknowledge what you do. How many things do you actually do in a day? Acknowledge it, celebrate it. Huge accomplishments. Write it down. Did you get up and brush your teeth today? That's a beautiful thing. Write it down. Oh, I'm so glad I was able to brush my teeth. I was so glad that my hands could move. 
I'm so glad that my fingers can move. I'm so glad that my arms and my legs were able to guide me to the restroom, that I was able to move around and be mobile. Okay. Yeah. Listen, be grateful for those things. They're not little, they're huge. It says, take a day to be conscious of everything that you start and what you finish. That's like yesterday, y'all. Let's just go over real quick. I'm going to tell you what I did just so you know. Let me just be transparent here. I made a list of everything I needed to do. It felt so good. I slept so well at the end of the day because I did everything on my list. Right? I was like, apply for passport. Get my, you know, get my tax ID number for my business. Get my this, get my that. Apply for this, apply for that. Get this grant. Like all these things that were on my list. Okay, I had to literally <laughs> make a list and hold myself accountable. I had to check myself. I said, sit your punk ass down. Sit down. Get this on this list right here. This is how I talk to myself because I love myself more now than I ever have. <laughs> Shout out. Listen, y'all getting the best version of me, even with all of my perfect imperfections. All my imperfections are perfect. I, I Listen, I've made a lot of mistakes and in life, I probably will make a few more, but I'm looking forward to it. What a beautiful thing to learn and live and keep growing and going and wake up every day. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I, I accomplished everything on my list. And at the end of the day, do y'all know I slept so good because I felt as though I had a day fulfilled, but knowing tomorrow's not promised. The most I ain't got to wake me up. So when I open my eyes and I see a new day, I'm like, yes, I want a new day. Ah, congratulations, right? There's somebody that was here yesterday, ain't here today. There was somebody that was planning for tomorrow, yesterday, and tomorrow is today and they ain't make it. So listen, you better be grateful for being in this moment, being at this time. There's some people that woke up this morning that won't be here by the afternoon. It is the cycle of life. This takes pressure off of you, right? Where are you at? calibrate your mind are you in the past the present the future listen okay so this says at the end of the day thank yourself for what it is that you accomplish yeah wrap your arms around yourself pat yourself on the back congratulations self you did a good job yeah listen there may be things that still weren't complete but that's okay there's always tomorrow god willing never mind that right now be grateful for what you were able to accomplish today celebrate it this will add more motivation to do even more tomorrow, okay? So listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Tonight, I'm going to be celebrating my accomplishments with myself. I'm gonna get dressed up, okay? I'm a little dressed up right now, at least according to me. Can y'all see I got on my, my peacock pants? They really make me happy. These are my money green pants with the yellow, and then I got my little African tribal print here. I like this outfit, it makes me happy. I don't know why well, I got on my turquoise earrings and I got my little puff pulled up. Okay, feeling real good, y'all. <laughs> feeling real good, shea butter all over my body. But listen, I'm going to celebrate my accomplishments tonight. I'm actually going to throw myself a party and I'm going to celebrate, right? It's a beautiful thing when you dance in the presence of yourself, when you dance in the presence of your ancestors. I'm going to get barefoot in my home, which I always do. Um, and just dance and celebrate my accomplishments. And I also want to celebrate my mistakes. They've been the best thing to ever happen to me, right? Those mistakes are like, how are you supposed to learn? I ain't never seen nobody successful that didn't have to go through failure. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to it. Holy Spirit, give us angel numbers, please. And thank you. What is it that our angel guys want us to pay attention to? Okay, so we got 666. This says reflect, love, affection, compassion, kindness, attention, self-love, loving on self. Several unexpected developments will enter your life and impact how you feel. This is a chance to reevaluate your identity. You need a mental shift towards greater optimism, self-assurance, and trust. Put your faith in your gut and inner voice. Pay attention to your feelings and use them to help you become a better person. Use your feelings to help you become a better person. Oh, we 2323 endless cycles, charisma, communication, society, movement, journey, repetitive circumstances and patterns. So this represents to me triggered um, emotions, dark nights of the soul, 
staying in a cycle of, you know, unfortunately low vibrational negative thoughts, unlearning a way of doing things, right? Removing those things that could have been projected onto you. And again, going back to the basics, giving yourself permission to move forward. Give yourself permission to be free. Somebody comment down below. I give myself permission to be free from all restraints and negative energies, soul ties and anything that anybody's projected onto me out of their own insecurities. I forgive them, but I call my power back to this current moment because, hey, I kind of need my power. Yeah, I got to go about my journey. So I deserve to move forward and I give myself permission to do so. Listen, that is a full statement. <laughs> That was straight off the top of my mental spirit, y'all. What I just gave y'all. These are gems. Comment down below. I dare you. Listen, compulsively, obsessively, and deliberately have a conversation with yourself. 2323, it says, there's some truth, okay? Don't resist it. Accept it. Whatever that truth is, don't resist it. Accept it. Start with self, right? Yeah. Go within. What's true about you? Something that you could be doing over and over. It could be a way of thinking. Something that you could be saying over and over. Something that you could be doing over and over that you know maybe you need to stop. Until you're tired and restrained beyond depression, unfortunately, it's going to take you to make a decision about your life. Live life for yourself. Life is all about passion. Then you make a change and the world around you follows. Yeah, this is really how you shift into those energies. This is how you shift the energy around you is by focusing in on yourself. Because remember, you then become a magnet for beautiful experiences that are a reflection of what it is that you are giving yourself permission to be. Oh, wait, somebody comment. I'm giving myself permission to be great. I'm giving myself permission to move forward and be okay with moving forward. I'm giving myself permission to eat food that makes me happy, that I enjoy. I'm giving myself permission to enjoy my food. I'm giving myself permission to move my body well. I'm giving myself permission to enjoy nature. I'm giving myself permission to walk barefoot and touch and, and or connect with Gaia to allow Gaia, the earth, to transmute any unnecessary energies even if they're energies that I myself have opened myself up to or energies that have attached themselves to me, I give myself permission to release them right now in this moment. I also give myself permission to gladly celebrate myself without restraint, y'all. Acknowledge what you do. Throw yourself a party. Listen, okay? Throw yourself a party and celebrate yourself. Tell yourself, I'm beautiful. I'm wonderful without feeling the need to people please people that could be looking at you like, oh my gosh, she's conceited. But if you were in a corner depressed, not liking yourself, they're like, oh my gosh, she needs help. Well, what, are you, what is it that you want, right? What is it that they want? Whatever they want has nothing to do with you. Please you. And then everything outside of you will get in order and alignment. 888, listen, baby, material and spiritual abundance. I've been getting this a lot, y'all, about the material and spiritual abundance. Oh, listen, I've been getting this a lot, y'all, okay? And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I am so grateful for all of the abundance that is coming into us monetarily, spiritually, just the feeling of being wealthy, wealthy in mindset, wealthy in soul, spirit. It yields beautiful, abundant, infinite possibilities for doors to open up, for things to find you in a very beautiful way. I'm open to all the miracles and abundance that the universe has for me on today, on this day, right now. This is my vibration. And so now I'm telling the universe, yes, yes, universe. Hey, how you doing? Okay, good. I need more of that. Give me more of that frequency. So the universe is like, okay, throw yourself a party. I might even order a cake, y'all. I know they got some vegan cakes. I'm going to see if I can order myself a cake because every day is your birthday. Every day you get a chance to be reborn. Every day is your birthday. That's why people ask me, oh, when's your birthday? Well, there's a day that I was actually born, but my birthday is every day because it's an opportunity to die, transform, and be reborn. Hence the fact we talk about, you know, the real cycle of life, overcoming death. I'm not the same person I was when I was 18. Okay, come on, y'all, listen. 888, as above, so below. 
It says personal power, material and spiritual abundance, wealth, resources, force, balance, confidence, material gain, epic romance. Ooh, I've been feeling love coming in too, y'all. I've been feeling love coming in. You know, me and my lover, we meet in the ethereal realms and it's a beautiful thing. It absolutely is fulfilling, but again, I'm coming in as a whole person. So what more is there to fill up within myself other than the self-love that I have for myself? So it's nice to see the reflection in somebody else. Seeing somebody else that loves themselves just as much as I do is beautiful, y'all. I see my love in the ethers. It says, all that is good and pleasant in your life will multiply. Somebody comment that. Oh, all that is good and pleasant in my life will multiply is multiplying currently actively that's happening right now and it will continue to happen on this day and the days that are ahead of me angels are sending us the numbers to reassure us of prosperity and well-being is ahead moving forward yes your surroundings will treat you with admiration and respect somebody comment my surroundings are treating me with admiration and respect use it for the greater good listen how are you, you know, uh, how do you say not donating, <laughs> uh, not adhering? What am I looking for? Contributing. What is your contribution to humanity? Sometimes it's just a high vibration. Do you know just having a high vibration, you know, that spills over into your neighbor's house, that spills over into your, like that spills over into the city. Yeah, this is beautiful. Give me one more spirit. 13, 13. 13 is a really interesting number, y'all. People think it's taboo. I don't really get caught up in 13. 13, 13 is a very powerful number. Um, it represents death and transformation, in my opinion. It says starting fresh, encouragement, goals, foundations, creative ventures, communication. Yeah, communication is powerful, y'all. When I think of communication, I think of what words am I speaking onto myself and others? But in order for me to speak, I have to think. What am I thinking first, right? You know how they say, think before you speak? Yeah, those words start in your mind first. They have power there first. And then when you speak them into the atmosphere, you make it so. So be mindful of the words that you are speaking onto yourself and others because they will not return to you void. It says encouragement, goals, foundations, creative ventures, communications, Step out of your comfort zone. I'm doing that too, y'all. I'm creating something right now that I'm like, oh, this is so uncomfortable, but I'm excited and terrified and happy all at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we go. Conversations with Neff on the podcast. Listen, step out of your comfort zone. You are about to create something meaningful. All of your skills and talents will bring you auspicious profits, okay? So this is telling me if you build it, they will come, it will come. It's meaning prosperity. It's meaning all that you need. If you build it, build what? By way of your purpose, what are you passionate about, right? Yeah, the days for working just for money. Ugh, I did that one time. I'm not gonna say I did that one time. I just didn't wanna leave when spirit told me to leave. Like my time was up, but I was making a whole bunch of money. And so source is so powerful because source took the joy out of it. I would get the paychecks, y'all. I was making like 10, 11,000 a month. I would get the paychecks and be too tired to spend them. I wasn't happy. It was, it was forced. Whereas when I first started the job, I loved it, right? I didn't, I didn't listen to and uh, neither was I obedient to when it was time to go. I heard source tell me there's something else for you. It's time to go. Everything you're learning here is going to help you at the next level. And I was like, yo, I'm making like $12,000 a month. I got a Range Rover. You know, I got a five bedroom house. I'm like, what? Move. I'm the top salesperson. What are you doing? I'm number three out of 500 people in this whole building. And sometimes I'm number one. Okay, listen. Child and checks would come. The money would come. And I would be like, oh God, I got to go to work. And every month I started from zero and I'd have to work my way back up. And baby, I was born to talk, honey. I thank the most high for the gift of gab. I thank the most high for being able to enunciate emotions. I thank the most high for being understood clearly and or having a good communicative gift because that's all I've done all my life, right? But I never, I've been in sales, but I never liked to sell anything, 
that I didn't believe in. The reason I was so successful is because whatever I was selling, I believed in it. Yeah, I really did. I ain't never sold my soul, but there were times where the money got good and most I was like, yep, time for you to go. Or maybe it was time for me to move on an assignment. And I was like, oh my God, I stayed at that job, child. I found myself in the handicap stall on the floor crying like, oh my God. And I had just gotten a $14,000 check brand new Range Rover, had a baby, everything was good, but I was not finding joy in it anymore. The joy had left and I was afraid. I was scared. I'm like, God, what am I going to do other than this? This is what I do. Right. And then I went to another job and then I got to a point where I was like, I don't want to sell nothing. I learned how to communicate. I can talk to anybody, anywhere. I don't give a damn if they got an accent. What? Listen, my ears have been tuned to understand all dialects. That's a gift. That's a gift. Right? Yeah. That's a gift. And so the most I was like, yeah, I need you to take your gift over here. Do you trust me? I'm like, yeah. I ain't never known a moment that you guided me to a place where I have gone and it hasn't been a good place. And so I went to the next level and I went to a new place. And then I got to the position where I was like, you know what? I feel like I've learned a lot working for these billion dollar corporations, million dollar companies that I can go and start my own business. The most I was like, everything that you've gone through up until this point was leading you to be a boss. Everything by way of corporate structure, everything by way of communicative efforts, everything, even with me going to English, um, not English, going to Tuskegee, you know, majoring in English and pre-law. Look at me. I go to spiritual court every day on my platform, right? So this is about trusting the process, even when it feels uncomfortable. Every job that I started, I was terrified. <laughs> and then I became number one. And they're like, oh my God, that's her. Oh my God, that's her. Is that her? Yeah, that's her. They would see my name up on the billboard, my numbers. I'm like, oh my God, I do not want all this attention. <laughs> Why, Lord? I used to have people come over and listen to my calls because they're like, what is she saying <laughs> to these people that she is making all this money? And I'm like, I just believe in what I'm doing. And I liked talking to people, y'all. I got into real good conversations. I've talked to some people all over the world, honey. Nevertheless, I went on a tangent, but I hope you got something out of it. I don't know about you, but I did. Thank you for allowing me to be myself. Listen, it's okay. This says starting fresh. Listen, step outside that comfort zone. Every time I didn't want to be uncomfortable, it led me to some type of a blessing. Even coming to YouTube, y'all, I was dragging my feet. I tell this story all the time. I was laying in the bed like, oh my God. <laughs> the most I was like, take your punk ass to YouTube. I'm like, oh my God. What am I going to say? I just showed up and the right words came out. I just let the Holy Spirit take over and I let God take my life. And here I am. <laughs> so it says, build up your confidence and trust in your decisions. All your skills and talents will bring you auspicious profits. Yeah, if you build it, they will come. Sometimes we're very systematic. I've been that person too, where it's like, oh, I can't do this until I get the degree. Oh, I can't do that. Most people that have a natural talent, they just go. Do y'all know most millionaires I've met? Have I met a couple of billionaires? I might've met a couple of billionaires when I was in real estate. Y'all done did a little bit of everything, okay? If it, if it calls for me to communicate something, I've done it, okay? Because <laughs> I loved it, but listen, Everybody that I've ever met that was very, very wealthy started out afraid. They always told me to be uncomfortable, right? It was always a fear. I would always cry first and then the most high would bless me in whatever business it was or company that I was working for. And I've worked for major companies, y'all. Kaiser Permanente on the West Coast, one of the largest medical company in like on the West Coast, billion dollar, uh, you know, organization, four star medical care. You know what I'm saying? I worked for GTE when it was GTE Verizon. I was one of the top agents there. Okay. I worked for the Los Angeles Times. I was the number one salesperson there. 
right? Then I went from that to advertising. And then the Los Angeles Times got bought out by the Chicago Sun Times. And then I moved forward, but it was always communication. But every job that I started at started with me in the bathroom. Every time I'd be like, oh my God, I got hired. <laughs> Once they hired me, I would go to the bathroom. I'm like, excuse me, can I go to the bathroom? You know, I go to the bathroom and start crying. Oh God, I don't know. They would give me all these scripts and stuff like that. I started to rewrite the scripts and I'm like, I can't act like no, listen, I got to have fun doing this. I was still me. Okay. And let me tell you, it always turned out with me making a lot of money and me being like the number one person. By the time I left some of these companies, they had restructured their scripts based on my ideas. They Well, I'm not going to say they stole them, but they absolutely did study me. Okay. Whatever my contribution was, trust me, I'm getting it back times 10. But that's just a little story about you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. Did I go on a tangent, y'all? I absolutely did. Let's just see what the ancestors have to say. I hope you're enjoying the video. Comment down below. The magician, listen, the magician represents an alchemist, manifestation, the number one. Listen, that's divinity. This is what this is what spirit is saying. You have the power to manifest. Somebody comment down below. I'm manifesting the best outcome for myself. I give myself permission to move forward. I give myself to be victorious. I give myself permission, excuse me, to be victorious. I give myself permission to be in optimum health. I give myself permission to be vibrant and well. I give myself permission to eat food that tastes good. I give myself permission to be authentic without fear of what somebody else is going to think. It doesn't matter what they think because that's really what they think of themselves. People that think too much about other people or criticize other people are afraid to go within, in my opinion, okay? Comment down below. So no people pleasing. Who are you satisfying other than yourself? That's your number one lady. I am my number one lady. I am, you know, maybe you're your number one guy if you're masculine here. Welcome. Hey there. Hi and hello. Community, okay? Community is coming up a lot. I said this the other day. The number four, you could be seeing 444. Community represents what contributions are you making to your city? I want to work with the elderly, y'all. Okay. When I was younger, when I was a child, my mother used to take us to the convalescent hospitals and um, homes, rather, you know, to sit with elderly people that didn't have people to visit with them. We would make like sugar free cookies for people that had diabetes and all that. And these old people just loved us. Some of them had dementia. Some of them, they just loved us. They were just having a really good time. So that that just kind of reminds me of something that I want to keep going. Now, the laws have somewhat changed, you know, with all these weird, you know, COVID and blah, blah, blah. But back in the day, we were able to do that. We would also go to Skid Row and feed the homeless. That's something that I still do as much as possible. Where I'm at now, there's there's like no homeless people. I don't see no homeless people, thank God, on the streets. But where I was in California, um, there are people that I fed for years. I'm just sharing that here with y'all. I really don't like to broadcast, I guess. I don't know why I feel a way about that. Maybe because there's a fear that people think you're bragging or that you think that you're, you know, you want some type of praise. No, it's not that. It's really not. So I, I really need to sit with myself on that. But I really don't tell people what I do. Now I'm going to share it. You know, so keep water in your car. Keep bananas, fruit. You know, in the summertime, it gets really, really hot. If you can't find a homeless person, go find one. Give them something. If it's wintertime and it's cold and you can afford to buy a blanket, you know, or something like that. Or if you have old blankets, give them to them. A lot of them do not want shelter that I had to learn that the hard way. Some of them are comfortable being on the streets, okay? Some of them get money, so they're okay. So it's almost like not patronizing them in a way that you are uh, speaking down on their situation. You're just coming along to plant that seed and to help. At the end of the day, listen, it's going to feel real good. I promise you. Shout out to Moses, you know? The guy in California that I knew for years, I miss him so much. He always would be in the same spot and he knew that I would come to help him. And his name was Moses, or at least that's what he told me his name was. 
And um, I miss him so much. You know, my mother fed this woman. Uh, I think her name was Hillary for like 20 years. You know, Thanksgiving, man, my mother would give her a nice plate. I mean, we would feed her. And this was the cleanest homeless woman I had ever seen in my life. She would go to the gas station, wash her clothes out. She was real neat. Her stuff was always packed up real nice and eaten. Like she knew God was going to take care of her. When I tell you, we used to hook her up. My mom even invited her, asked her to come over. She was like, no, she didn't want to come over. 20 years. And then one day we just didn't see her no more, you know? So that's just how it goes. But community, that's the moral of the story, y'all. This is giving me a lot of good nostalgia, a lot of good memories of contributing a lot of good things that I'm extracting from my childhood that are encouraging me to move forward and to duplicate these efforts, right? Let that be contagious with your children, community. So if you don't know where to go, Google your community. Find How can I donate? How can I volunteer? Where can I go? Uh, can you give clothes, clothes to the church or the Salvation Army? Listen, this says patience. This is what source is reminding us of, the number 17. One plus seven is eight. So we got the number one, the number four. You could be saying 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 4, 8, 8, 8. One plus seven, okay, is eight. Patience, it says, okay? Knowledge, know thyself. When you know yourself, you absolutely affect the world in a way that you let the earth know I am here and I have every right to be here. I'm contributing in a really good way to society by way of my energy and my efforts are genuine right? Knowledge, studying, taking time to research, right? It's not a destination. It's absolutely ongoing. I learn new things every day. My son taught me something the other day. He's like, mom, did you know in China, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I learned something new every day. You never stop learning. Shout out to the 99 year old woman <laughs> who told me, she says, I'm still learning. This lady was so phenomenal. I loved her so much. I did. I'll tell y'all that story another day. But I would get up and get dressed and go to work. And she would see me going out to the call center in my nice little Mercedes Benz. And, you know, I, I, I was doing my thing, y'all. Okay. And she would tell me, you look out of sight. And she would show me pictures of herself when she was younger. Baby, she was a bombshell. And she told me, she says, I think I want to get some implants. 99 years old, I would laugh. And she would always give me these little gems. You know, she would always drop these things in my spirit. She would see me going off to work and she'd be like, oh, you look out of sight. You got the shoes matching the bag? I'm like, yeah. And your nails match your car? I said, yeah. <laughs> and she told me, I'm still learning. When I downloaded that, one thing about me is I listened to my elders I said, wow, okay, let me take some pressure off myself. So this thing called life is going to get interesting then. Because if you're 99 years old and you've been on the planet and you say you're still learning, oh, I need to stop being this person that's putting all this pressure on myself, right? Remember, I'm in a high profile position. Every job I get, my resume is impressive. I know if I apply, I'm going to get the job. Like that type of an energy, right? And that could put a lot of pressure on one person, especially to produce. There were months where I was going through something mentally, psychologically, and I wasn't the top salesperson, right? And that's when I knew it was time for me to shift because the joy had been taken out or something was going on in life that I needed to stop and reset myself. And if that required me walking away, then I had to walk away. But the pressure, it was pressure to produce. Everybody wanted me on their team, right? I was known. I was always that star. Yeah, I was always that star. But she told me, she said, listen, when she told me that, I took a deep breath and was like, whew, okay, so I ain't got to know it all. <laughs> and at that time, I had to have been like 29, 30, one of the majors, I don't know. Teachers, okay, it says, yeah, this, is, this reminds me of teachers. The elders, she was my teacher. She taught me something. She showed me something by way of her 99 years of living that uh yeah i took and i held it and i will never forget that there's certain gems that people drop by way of conversation because nine times out of ten if somebody passes me we're gonna have a conversation y'all i'm that person 
<laughs> and I listen and I know that everything happens for a reason. Even the encounter is happening for a reason, but everybody's your teacher. No man is really your enemy. Everybody's really your teacher. That's a saying that I read one time from Florence Scovel Shin, a beautiful spiritual practitioner. May the most high forever be pleased with her you know, endeavor. She was absolutely a teacher in my head that I never met in the physical, but by way of spirit, she helped me out a lot. But this does conclude the session. Ooh, 55, 55. Ooh, I did not know we was going to go that far, y'all, but that's how it is. Healing life. I got to come up with a song for healing life. Healing life with positivity. 24-7-365. Why not? You're not going to make it out of life alive. You better get this life. And come get this spiritual work. I love y'all. Listen, my inner child is cracking up. She's so cute with them big old eyes, baby. I had a conversation with her the other day and she told me, do you still pray at night? This is what my inner child told me when I was meditating. I said, if my inner child was here, what would she tell me? She said, remember when you used to pray at night? I had a prayer when I was a little girl and I would say, um, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the most high my soul to keep in perfect peace. And don't let the devil ever, 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 ever get me. This is what I would pray, right? Because I had people doing spell work, child. I was an earth angel, chosen, all of that. I never said, and if I die before I wake, because I knew even as a child, I didn't want to speak that onto my life. I was so smart. At five years old, three years old. I remember going to the bathroom, praying and feeling the Holy Spirit come over me. All the time, there was a knowing, there was a pulling, and I thank the most high for that, going back to the basics. So she reminded me last night, do you pray at night? These are things that I had stopped doing as an adult, right? Because trauma happens, and then you go through the dark night of the soul, and you, you come up out of being mad, sad, and depressed, and really you're angry because life is giving you something that you never anticipated. And then you realize, oh, life is giving me lemons. Let me just go ahead and put a little sugar cane with this and make me some lemonade. That's how life goes. I love y'all so much. Wherever you are on this beautiful planet, I do, 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 do love, love you. Wrap your arms around yourself real tight. Oh, let's do it together. I love you. Tell yourself you love yourself as much as possible. Do this in the mirror if you possibly can. These are things that I do even when you're watching, when you're not watching. And this is why we are so authentic in being ourselves I love you so very much. If you want to donate to the channel, listen, it's not required, but it is appreciated. Anything that you do, the beautiful comments, absolutely, it does not go unrecognized. And I'm just glad that the Most High is well with us. I will see you soon in the next video. Until then, peace be with you.